You can stop looking around trying to find the best Mac applications because in this video, I'm giving you the 10 best apps that'll actually make your life easier. And the best part is they're all free. Hey, what's up everyone? My name's Nenad and this first app is super popular right now. So I decided to jump on the bandwagon to see what all the hype's about. And now that I've been using it for a while, I can honestly say it's been a real game changer for me. So this one's called Alfred and it's basically a boosted up version of the spotlight function on your Mac. And if you don't know what spotlight is, it's just a quick search function that finds different files on your computer. Now with Alfred, you can also search for files with the same spotlight keyboard shortcut of command space, and that'll now bring up this Alfred search bar. So you can type what you're looking for right in here, or you can write in different commands like shutdown or empty trash. Now where things get really cool is you can browse the internet by hitting the same command shift shortcut, and then just type in which website you want to search. So if you type in YouTube and whatever you're looking for after that, hit enter, and it'll take you straight to your browser and show you the results. Now you can do the same thing with Google or Amazon and a bunch of other websites that are set up right here in the settings. So Alfred isn't listed in the app store, which means you gotta download it off their website. So just go to alfredapp.com and hit this download button. Now I'm using the free version and it's already got a ton of different features, but if you wanna boost up the app even more, you can buy the power pack. So the second one's an app that's gonna keep your menu bar free from all that ugly clutter. It's called Hidden Bar and it's the perfect alternative to Bartender 4, which which is all the way up to 16 bucks now. Basically what you do is you click this little arrow in your menu bar and it'll show you all your hidden icons. Now if you hold the command key, you can click and drag this little line around and everything that's to the left of this line is gonna be hidden. If you wanna move your icons to a different place, you do the same thing. Just hold the command key and drag them to wherever you want. There's a couple other settings you can play around with in the preferences, but that's basically everything the app does. Hidden bar is available in the app store, so just give it a search and you'll be able to save six $16 and download it for free. So this next app is called Rectangle. Now I don't know anyone who uses Mac's built-in split-screen view, and whenever I try it, I have no clue what to do after clicking on this green button. So if you want to make this easier, go and download Rectangle, which really gives you way more customization. Now you can set it so that when you just drag your window to a specific spot on your screen, it'll automatically resize and snap into place. But if you want to kick it up a notch, you can use the hotkey shortcuts. Just go into the shortcuts tab in the Rectangle preferences and it'll show you all the different ways you can resize your windows. Now it's super easy to download, just go to rectangleapp.com and the download button's right here on the homepage. There's also a paid version you might want to try, but I'm sticking with the free download. Now real quick, if you like this video so far, go hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to me, so I just want to say thank you. Another app I gotta mention is Monitor Control. This one's going to be super useful if you use an external monitor with your Mac. Basically, you can adjust the brightness of your display without having to go into the menu of your actual monitor. It's honestly a big hassle pulling up the menu on my LG monitor just so I can adjust the brightness. Now with monitor control, all I gotta do is click on this little sun icon in my menu and now I can drag this little slider around and it'll change the brightness. There's a couple of different settings in the preferences you can play around with, but that's pretty much it. It's super simple and definitely convenient. Monitor control is available in the app store, so just type the name in the search bar and download it straight from there. So we all know how to take a basic screenshot on a Mac, but this next app takes it to the next level. This one's called Xsnip, and some of these features are really cool. You can pick specific windows that you want to screenshot if you have multiple windows open, and you can get these really precise all the way down to the pixel with this super magnified view. Now what's really different from just your basic screenshot is what Xsnip calls scrolling capture. If you want to save something like this long article, you can set your capture area and start scrolling through it, and that'll create this really cool screenshot that you wouldn't be able to get with Mac's built-in capabilities. It's super fun to mess around with, and you can do all kinds of editing before saving the image. Xsnip's available in the App Store, so it's really easy to download, or you can get it straight from their website at xsnipapp.com. Now this next one's a free app called Amphetamine. So this one's super useful when I need my Mac to stay awake for whatever reason, because I normally have it set so it goes to sleep after only a few minutes. But what you do is you'll set a certain amount of time that you want your Mac to stay awake, or you can just hit indefinitely to keep it on until you decide to toggle it off. Just make sure you remember to turn it off or you'll end up coming back to a dead laptop. Now I usually run the app when I'm exporting videos and I don't want to have the export fail because my Mac went to sleep. Or I'll turn it on if I'm shooting some footage and I need it to stay awake while I try to get that perfect shot. It's honestly really convenient because you don't need to go in and change up your system settings and if you're anything like me you'll forget to change them back after you're done. Amphetamine's available in the app store so if you think you'll need it go and download it from there. Now this next one's 
called App Cleaner. So when you delete an app just by dragging it into the trash, you don't really know if all the other files that came with the download were also deleted. So with App Cleaner, when you drag an application in here, it'll show you all the other files that were downloaded with it. Now all you do is hit this remove button and all these files are deleted at the same time. So there won't be any needless files left on your Mac. It's super convenient and I use this every time I want to delete something. This one's not available in the App Store, but just search for App Cleaner in Google and click on the link that takes you to freemacsoft.net. Their website looks like this. Now go down to version 3.6.7, hit the download button and follow the instructions from there. Now, if you need a little help with your procrastination, then you got to download this next one. It's called self-control and it's perfect for those of us that don't have any. So you add in all the websites you want to block and then choose how long you want them disabled. Now, if you try to go on a blocked website, you'll see it won't connect and don't even think about restarting your computer or deleting the app because it'll still be blocked for whatever amount of time you chose. Just go straight to selfcontrolapp.com, hit the download button, add in all those distracting sites you want to block, and get on with being a productivity machine. This next app's really good for tracking your time, and it's called Be Focused. It's a really simple timer that lives in your menu bar and tells you how long you've been working. You can open up the settings and change up the amount of time you want to stay focused, and you can set how long a break you want between intervals. I like how I can always see how much time's left up here, and it's just another basic tool I use to make sure I'm not procrastinating. So you can download it straight from the app store. And once you get your settings dialed in, you can get to work. Now, this last one isn't really a productivity app, but it's one that I really think you should download. So I stare at my computer for hours on end, and I notice that it can really disrupt my sleep if I'm looking at my screen before I go to bed. Now, what Flux does is it adds a warmer filter to my screen, so the light isn't that blinding blue light. It's super helpful, especially when the sun goes down and just makes it a lot easier on my eyes. You can set it so that it tracks the amount of sunlight based on your zip code and it'll automatically adjust the warmth based on what time it is. So just set how warm of a filter you want and let the app do the rest. Check out the app store if you want to get Flux and you can download it straight from here. So there's a ton of apps out there you can try and I'll make sure to go over some more of them in another video, but I'm curious to know what your favorite apps are. Let me know in the comments so I can check them out and see if I can increase my productivity some more. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. As always, I appreciate you and thanks for watching.